makes it more exciting. So intellectually, it's far more important to be conscious of your choices so that you don't become the maddening mediocrity of a creature of habit or habituation. And you can be lulled into what used to be called the bourgeois attitude. So you just wake up in the morning and you question, um, am I, I going to be this person today? Am I going to um, choose? Do I have coffee? Or do I have coffee? Do I have two or three beers? Or do I have no beers? Every single moment that you have an opportunity for choice, it should be a conscious choice rather than a habituated one. And you be become habituated not only by drugs, but by class society, by your own moral code. And you then act in what might be called extremely predictable or patent behavior. For me, the world is only interesting in so far as I believe any one of us at any given time can surprise and move in a direction that was always available but not quite thought of yet. So I like to think that people always are conscious of the fact that there is power in choice even if the only choice is a negative choice. When the concept of having choice disappears, the person disappears. So, not having choice is a nadir. But, having choice and never exercising it. Worse. Because the life is unexamined. According to the Greeks, a terrible thing. <laughs> because that life is not worth living. So you can describe the fact that uh, not really living, they don't have real joy or pain. And so the people who are conscious of their separation are ones suffering more. True. Therefore there is the injustice. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't believe that comes from it, though. Injustice comes from, doesn't come from that. I can't say that a kid who grew up in Orchard Park, black, father that left the house, as mine did, for better words. And, um, you know, an equally promising specimen born into a home that's going to say choke, you're going to do Harvard, you're going to do London School of Economics graduate course. Very unlikely, morally speaking, in terms of crimes against society, becoming a felon, bank, bank robber, etc. You can well, imagine that amongst the white guy and you can imagine that amongst the Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I mean, it, it, it seems amongst the black class as opposed to um, gender, should take as opposed to Boston, color, anyway. as opposed to religion. Ultimately, in terms of crimes against society, the lower the income level, the greater the propensity toward a social behavior. Converse being uh, can we can we amend that? Are we talking about crimes against the society or crimes against money? And unfortunately, who built the society? And that's not that's not part of the question. Now, the only question is, in reality, 
saying, is it a crime against society? Is it wrong to steal from the rich? Say, morally it's not. We know that. Robin Hood is a revered figure. Is it wrong to steal from the rich to give to the poor? Okay, morally the high road says no. Regardless. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now we take the poor who steal for themselves. That's the same thing as Robin Hood. Uh, that's not against society, that's against money. Okay, the only reason they're in jail is because they stole something of worth. It's not because they hurt somebody. Oh. Now the other part of it, the other part of it, the crimes against society are actually crimes against themselves, which is not considered a part of society according to your according to your definition. They're not they're not indeed human beings because they don't they have choices but they do not or cannot manipulate them. Well, that's why folk heroes tend to be, quote, outlaws. People who opted, uh, rather than leading the mediocre middle, I mean, Sam, in existence, yeah. when, when the, the strike of lightning hit that, hey, this is in my hands, that they moved to an a social rather than a pro social behavior. Well, you know, Jay Gould and all these people are considered positive figures contributors to America, etc. and so forth. And by the standards I have, they were rapists, <clears throat> the, the big capitalists. That's my my own personal evaluation. The capitalists were rapists. Oh yes, that's that's well known. Any union, any union officer will tell you that right away. <laughs> well, I worked for the IWW for four or five years. No, the yeah. problem being, no, I would just say the, the the big capitalists, the original ones, are, are rapists as well. Oh, all of them are. <clears throat> By definition. They make too much an hour. You see, the example that uh, appealed to me, I thought of it by accident one day. I mean, it should be an accident. But um, I had a company, it was me alone. Mm -hmm. Then I brought my cousin in. And I made less, and he made little. You know what I'm saying? We made the same. <laughs> Or essentially, if I ran a business, somehow something fell in my life, I was supposed to run a business, it would be a cooperative, you know, me. But, uh, well, that's what I try to run. That's the way I try to run my business. I work with you in cooperation. <laughs> I understand. Pass in your sleep. By the way, you know who this is? I forgot. Who what is? The music Just behind this? No, I don't know who it is. Uh, okay, it says you have a copy of Beauty for the Man.